So the last thing I need is a plot button, so I'll just take this plot button and trace out a plot button, and then I'll change its properties. So I'll call the tag button plot, and the string will just say plot. All right, I'll make it 12 point, and that's good enough for now. And then I want to take this axis thing and map it out. I want to go ahead and change the properties of this thing. There's a couple things I want to do. One is I want to change the tag. Oop, there's a lot of stuff in this one. I went too far. So the tag, I'll just change it to axis plot. And if I had more than one, I'd use a descriptive name, axis plot one and axis plot two or something like that. And then the other thing is there's a visible um, property and I want to change that to off and that way it won't show up until I actually plot in it but I, it, this way it, there's not an empty plot when I start up the thing so I think that's all we need and all we have to do now is is save it so I'll do file save and then we have to go and r write the code that does all this stuff Alright, so I've switched back to the M file editor, and this is our next demo GUI.m M file. And you'll notice that at the bottom, when we save that from guide, it put in a couple new functions. The first one is a callback for edit alpha. So this function will be executed every time the alpha box is edited. So for now, I'm just going to delete this. I don't really want anything to happen when I edit alpha. I want all the action to happen when I hit the plot button and that's this function down here button plot callback this function will get executed when I when I hit the plot button now the first thing I do f have to do from the plot button is grab alpha out of the edit alpha text box and I've just pasted in the function that does that alright so first thing to look at is here handles dot edit alpha picks out the edit alpha text box, the edit box, and it, this function get gets the string property from that box. All right? And the string property from that box is the value that's in it. All right? So this whole function get handles edit alpha string just grabs the number that's in the box. And then str2num converts a string, which is what we get out of the box, to a number. All right? So now alpha is a number that's gotten from converting the string in that box to a number. Now the next thing I want to do is stick that into that other text box that will be our output. So I do something like this. Alright, so what this does, it says set the text output objects string value to be the sign of alpha which is converted from a number to a string. All right, that says a lot. Okay, so set this object's string property to be this. All right, and what this thing does is it takes sine of pi times alpha, so whatever we got from alpha for alpha from the previous step, takes a sine of that, and then converts that number to a string, and then it'll stick it in the box. So just this should do should do what we want. All right, so just to test that, let's save it and then go back to the command window and we'll run the thing again. Here it is. Now if I hit plot, I should get sine of 1.75 pi in the box. And I assume that's right. Let's test it. If I change this to 1, sine of pi should be 0. That looks pretty good. All right. So let's see if I can do this. 1 quarter plot. Alright, so you can actually put operators in there and you can actually put known constants like pi. So this will give sine of pi squared whatever that is. Okay. So it's pretty flexible. All right, whatever you're allowed to use as an argument in sine. Uh, I expect you could even put a function. EXP of 1. So this would be sine of e pi, whatever that is. Alright, I assume that's right, but I guess I don't know for sure. Alright, so now all we have to do is get that same plot, 
plot button to also stick the plot of pi x or of alpha x into this little plot window that goes down the square. So let's exit this and go back to our window here. And now at the bottom down here, we want to add some code that calculates um, all this stuff. So the first thing we do is do x equals 0 colon 0 0.1 colon 10. Alright, so we get a set of x values from 0 to 10, incrementing by 0.1. Now you could have all these be input parameters, but I'm just going to fix it here. And then y equals sine of alpha times x. So now we have our x and y values. All we have to do is stick a plot of those into that little axes box that we created on our window. So now all we need to do is stick in the appropriate code to do the plot. So we'll do paste and here's what I did. P handles equals plot of XY parent handles up my axis. So basically this takes a plot of X and Y and using the default of parent which you don't have to worry about then uh, handles up my axis says stick the plot into this object which is that little axis um, that I made, although I call it axes plot. All right, so this is the tag to that little graph I pasted into the into the GUI, and handles dot axes plot is how I refer to that object. Handles dot tag, and then plot x y takes our x y data and sticks it in there. All right, the other stuff you don't have to worry about. By the way, it, it's not like I understand every detail of all this stuff. The way I learn how to do this is by finding samples in um, the MATLAB documentation and playing around with them. All right, So that's probably the way you need to approach it. Um, tr try to either buy a book, and there are books on MATLAB GUIs, or just find samples and, and play around with them. Anyway, we'll save this and see if this works. One never knows. So we'll go back here, type next demo GUI, click plot, and there it is. All right, now I can change this to 2 and hit plot to 57 and I should get a whole lot of cycles. All right, so that's about how it works. I wonder, did I make a mistake here? No, I think that's working. All right, so the bottom line is that it's fairly easy to draw these out. The, the, the writing of these little functions takes a good, little getting used to, and getting used to this way they refer to objects takes a little getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, and it does take a little while, but once you get the hang of it, um, then it's fairly easy to build GUI apps in, in MATLAB. Now, with a little effort, you could certainly make yours look better than mine looks, but this gives you the general idea of how it works. All right, so give it a shot if you're interested, and just feel free to ask me questions. All right, thanks a lot.